Hey Station here's John Doe back with you on uh, an application I wrote uh, a while back uh, which was a silo sorter. So before I get into what, what's new about this let's introduce some new people on what this is so that if they're checking this out for the first time they'll have some idea what this this thing is and what it does. So uh, the silo is basically the key uh, feature ar around this app um, using it to store uh, knickknacks all the stuff that we build um, just to keep the the area clutter free uh, just stick it into the silo I have a, a, an input bin here uh, and we could just store whatever so uh, there's also a viewer here just to give you an idea of the contents inside uh, and again it's it's not gonna really it's not really meant to for ores and um, I, I can tell you that here in advance uh, if you put ores in here you have to find it manually um, but it, it's a great place to put a lot of stuff uh, to keep it out of your way um, and then let's get into why I'm writing this app so uh, I was first introduced to uh, a similar feature to this from you know looking up somebody else's programming uh, they had a silo sorter in which they had a couple of buttons that did this exact same thing right you would hit this button and display it it would show you what's what's in the sorter uh, and if you hit a button it would spit it out to you and give you access to that item so that was really neat and, and I loved having that feature um, what I quickly found however was that you know the more stuff I had in there uh, when I wanted to find an item I, I just I could be sitting here for hours on end clicking this button over and over again until I found the item I wanted now uh, stationers isn't exactly the quickest responders so you know I could hit this button a couple of times and, uh, and it skips you know because I get click happy uh, it doesn't exactly keep up with the rate of clicking that you do though it's not bad but but overall I, I didn't want to sit here all day looking for an item, you know, and, and if I passed it and there was only one entry of it, well, then I had to cycle through the whole thing all over again until it came up again and, and hope I didn't pass it again. Um, and that's just because you, you have to pass everything through the sorter in order to find it. You can't just tell the silo, go find this one item and spit it out. Uh, it's first in, first out is, is how it works. So, uh, the method the methodology on on how this came to pass you know just it, it made sense so um, I wanted a way to look for a particular item without me having to sit here all day and, and press this, this dang button all day long so um, that brings us to where we are now um, so first headache I had was of all the things that we could build or stick into the silo how am I going to create all the hash codes and store them for me to do a compare with to see, you know, to present on all these monitors how to work, uh, how, to, how to display that to you uh, or myself, the user, right? So uh, what hit me was um, all these items that we can build are already loaded into the various printers that we have access to. And we're all going to have printers because we have to manufacture at one point or another. So as uh, as all these are connected, I opted to just link to a particular printer. Uh, so there we go. So this is the tool. And then it would show me the current recipe that's loaded for that item, right? So I could just dial through, find the printer I wanted, and then whatever was loaded. I, I would have to come over here if I wanted something, right? So let's say I'm in the pipe vendor and I wanted this particular pipe. You know, or if I wanted a different pipe, I would have to come in and, and dial that in until I found what I wanted to locate. Now, it's, it's helpful if you know what's in your silo already, uh, but if you don't, you know, it'll sort through whatever's in there, and if it's not in there, well, it won't spit anything out. But uh, come over here to your printer, and, and there's the pipes that I've selected at the printer. Now, one of the disappointing features uh, that I ran across was that there is no image 
for the built printers. I can only find an image for the kit for the builders. So just so that you know what your dial was set to, I chose to use that image and it at least has text on the bottom that tells me what the printer is, even if I don't recognize the image of that printer kit, right? So here's a hydraulic pipe bender. There's my electronics printer. And, and don't do it too fast with the clicking here because it may not keep up with your clicks. So, you know, nice and gentle, uh, and it'll keep up with that. Uh, now I have several buttons and I and I've added some um, some signs here to kind of help you remind you what these buttons are doing as I go through this demonstration. But basically, I have three push buttons that I need uh, or I have programmed for. So uh, if you want to use a different switch, uh, you'll need to go in and modify my code. So for now, just uh, or for starters, use the switch, uh, the push button version, uh, and that'll match my code. Uh, and then feel free to tweak from there if, if, if that's in your interest. Uh, but the, but the buildup is going to require one switch will be uh, with the dial option, and then we'll need three switches with the push button option. Uh, I'll need one logic housing, two memory logic chips, three console displays that will be loaded with a hash code display cartridge or uh, or circuit board. Uh, I forget the exact name, so forgive me if I missed that up. And then two displays. Uh, these displays will show the stack count. So uh, there's currently, you know, the, the tablet doesn't stack. So uh, if, you, if I hit the give button now, I will get one of these. Or if I go to like the coil, there's 50 in the stack. So if I hit the give button now, it will give me that stack of 50. So. This will let you know how big the stack is. The other display is uh, a percentage of uh, contents, right? So I am 1% full of the 600 items that I can store. So that's a lot of stuff. And you, it, that kind of takes away the guesswork of, well, do I have more space that I could stick more items in here? Uh, it's just a quick display for that. So uh, for those of you who remember the previous version, it, it took me three IC housings, uh, three different chips, three different programs to manage all this equipment and link them together. Thanks to the new IC10 uh, programming update uh, and the named batched uh, commands, uh, I can now do this with just one IC housing. Uh, so <laughs> this is a nice, uh, much tighter code for me and, and I'm really enjoying it uh, and I've actually actually got some speed improvements out of it uh, with a couple other tweaks that I have done. A um, couple of things to take note of uh, while I don't necessarily have to use pins anymore I am using them here for setting the memory uh, and the displays so the displays I'm going to have um, Actually, I got to walk you through that. So because of these displays, we have to have a data disk. Let me find that. Here we go. So um, what I'm doing is to the IC housing, I am writing the current printer selection, right? So we're going to want this display or the printer selection to be set to the IC housing. So what, whatever you name it, uh, it can be here. I haven't renamed it, so it's it's there, the IC housing. Uh, I, I would have loved to be able to write this value directly. It's it's the setting value, and I don't know why it won't allow me to directly write to setting. So uh, this is the displays are only going to work if you go through the disk and select your source data, right? So that's why I have the IC housing storing whatever printer that is currently selected by the dial. So the uh, the recipe is stored or it's read from the printer and then stored to memory one. Um, so when you put your data to the disk in here, we need to dial that in to memory one or whatever you decide to, right? Uh, and then finally, the 
current item that's in the sorter, well, that's going to go to memory two. It's in there somewhere. There it is. Okay. So again, feel free to rename these. These are simply set using the disk and not set in the program. So that's kind of a, a little tricky thing that you got to do when you set these up. All right, so the displays, uh, the, the other reason I set those to pens, if, if I mentioned this earlier, forgive me, um, it's so that you could set whatever display size that you wanted. If I had coded that into my IC program, or my MIPS program, you would have to go on through all the lines of code, find that, and then change that hex value for the, your desired display. Uh, I, I thought just putting it under a screw would make that easier so you'd have to change any code, especially for those who aren't comfortable playing with the code. Uh, it, it just seemed universally easier for everybody. Okay, so let's give a little look-see around what we've got. Um, I've got the the uh, SDB, the Sidem de, de Beers silo design here. Uh, it's managing keeping the door open and, and turning it on, so uh, you can certainly open the door yourself. Uh, but the program will do that once it's initially launched. It doesn't keep it open, so if you come in here and manually close it, you're going to mess up uh, the routine. It's just not going to work. So make sure this door remains open so all the parts can cycle through the sorter. Um, from the sorter, we, uh, sorry, from the silo, we go directly to a sorter, and you'll want to keep track of how many tubes that you've installed so that you can come to our program in here. Right, and I want to know the number of shoot sections that you're installing, because we need to add that to the total count, right? So I pull the total number of items that are in the silo, and then we add the number of shoots, because there are items sitting in the shoots. And when we go to find something, so that I don't end up in a permanent loop of looking for something, we count how many items to look for, process that number of times, and once those that loop has completed, it stops. So uh, th this has been proving to be pretty reliable for all my testing. So um, if you don't change that and you have more tube sections, then you won't complete a thorough search. Uh, if you have fewer sections than is in here, well, then you'll just go a couple over and that really won't hurt anything. Um, the only time it really is going to affect your searches if you have fewer than you actually have. So pay attention to that. Now I have instructions inside my code to remind you of what you need to do. Uh, you'll want to take your labeler and name your silo, your sorter, and your dial the same name. Uh, I did that to save space in my coding because we're using up a bit of line of codes here, but I, I do have some space to grow here if you wanted to add some amenities to what I've already got started here for you. Okay, so anything to go over that I haven't already? Uh, I, I don't I don't think so. So um, if there is, or if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on, you know, the, uh, the forum site. Let's go away. Okay, so uh, after the sorter, uh, well, we'll get, you will need to manage which side your outputs go to, right? So the right side, as you're facing the two exit ports of the sorter, the right side goes back or sends items back into the silo. Those are your reject items. The items that you want to export or, or to find and spit out will go on the left side of, uh, of that sorter or output one. Now, if you want to swap sides, you can go into my program here and uh, look for everywhere that I have an, uh, an output call from the sorter. And I think there's a total of three spots. Um, we're looking for an output setting. Here we go. So here's one right here. If you want to swap side, you change the zero to one change this one to a zero and here towards the end I'm using a variable to decide which to go to so right now it's using uh, if uh, if the hash code equals what's 
what's occupied hash code, then it's setting the value to one. So if you're swapping it, change from set equal to to set to not equal to, and then that will handle this variable for you uh, right there. All right, so not a lot to change uh, there if you need to swap sides. Uh, and of course the rest of the shoot, well, it just goes right back to the input slot of the sorter there uh, on the upper back section. All right, um, I think that covers all the introductions. Uh, like I said, you do have to name certain items and the rest go under screw. So I think we can get into uh, demonstrating how this thing works now. So um, I'm going to start with something I don't have, right? So um, here we go. I know I don't have this item in my silo. Um, so if I wanted to find and give me this item, I would just simply hit this button to find and give. And it's going to start cycling through every item uh, in the silo. Looky, looky, looky. And we'll eventually spit it out uh, if it's in there. If it's not, well, then obviously we didn't get anything. So let's go to an item I do have. Well, let's start with the printer sorter here. Okay, that's that's an item I do have, the insulated liquid pipe. So let's bring up the hydraulic printer. There we go. Uh, and now let's pick that. So I have one stack of pipe in there. And there we got delivered. And it's completed its run. Throw it back in there to keep it full. Okay, so uh, the other thing it's going to do, that, that just so that you're aware of, if it finds it, it's spitting it out. And it, it's not going to stop at just one. It will find every item and spit it out. So if you were paying attention to the display, I have several um, drops of these pipes. Uh, and one thing I found during my testing is that if you don't have an output shoot, then the, um, at least one of those items gets stuck in the chute and ends up getting regurgitated back into the silo. So you'd actually have to run it a second time to get that one little straggler out. But if you put in an output port, uh, everything makes its way out without a problem. And... Uh, you know, you, you get a good clean sweep. So, so let's do that. I have I have six stacks in there. So let's see if we get our six stacks out. Here's a one, a two, a three, a four, five, and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Go chase these back down. And we finished our search. So, so there we go. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, smaller, more efficient definitely faster than my previous version um i think i covered everything i think i mentioned that uh if you don't have one of these printers installed it will simply show a blank recipe because you know there's no printer so therefore there's no recipe you won't hurt anything to search it it'll just go through and you know it's not going to find nothing uh unless perhaps maybe there's nothing in the silo and then the doors will just kind of open and flash and still nothing comes out because Nothing in there. Um, okay, really, I think I'm done this time. Hope you enjoy the update. Uh, I know I'm loving it. Appreciate your feedbacks and your likes.